Dude, I'm not. I like. He, I think he lives out of his car. Have you ever seen it? Look, I I love that dude. He's sweet as can be, yeah, and he's hard working too. He gambles Honestly, too. Dude, he likes to gamble too, man. I I think that's why the dude lives yeah. out of his car. <laughs> I, look, a lot of times in life, when you see somebody in the gutter, there's a reason they in the gutter. They didn't like life didn't necessarily kick them down all by themselves. Yeah, you know? man, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. sometimes he, they'll uh, help. <laughs> he looks like a homeless Gimli. Is what he looks like. <laughs> he looks like a hobo threw up a hobo. <laughs> is what he looks like. He, he does. He does. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. I'm having trouble with my man horse. It's a good job to talk for a living. Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. I'm the end all, be all, see all, do all origamiest. Look how smart I is. Two guys, one podcast. I'd be a pioneer because I'd be a short, fat white guy playing basketball <laughs> too. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this is the podcast. Uh, how's your week been? Busy. Stressful and busy. All right, then. So lots of things that we don't want to talk about. Ben, oh, hey, here's something we can talk about. Okay. Um, I was looking for something to start the show, and I didn't really have a starter. We need a starter log. Well, well part of the reason that my week has been kind of, you know, bad. Right. Uh, I fell through the ceiling of my own home. I fucking forgot that. Here's how rarely yeah. we've hung out lately. I fucking forgot yeah. that happened. Bam, still bruised. That's so messed up, man. How did that... So, t- tell us the tale of woe. All right. So, uh, my wife and I have to go to a rehearsal dinner for a wedding that she's in the following day. Okay. Right? It's at like 4.30, but I don't get off work until like 4. So, like, I got I to gotta hustle, right? So, I make it home. She's in the shower shaving her legs. I'm like, okay, hey, I'm about to hop in. She goes, I wouldn't do that. The water is ice cold, and it really never got hot since I've been in here. So I'm like, fuck. Pilot light has to be out on the water heater. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so my water heater is in the attic. I know that's strange. Dozens of people have told me this is strange. It's, it's not strange to me. But at the, at the same time, it's yours is not the only house where the water heater is in the attic, too. It is a choice that is occasionally made. It's a bad choice. It's a rare choice, particularly in this region. But it is not, like, it's not unique. Yeah, so uh, I didn't know that. Like, it's, I thought that was kind of normal. Um, so, uh, like, I, I have to go outside because to get in the attic, it's in our carport. And so you pull down the, the ladder and you climb up there. And whenever you get... Up the ladder, into the attic. In my attic, there's only really two solid platforms. One is the one where you walk up, and the other is what the water heater is on. And everything else is strictly just rafter and drywall or rafter and plank board, whatever the fucking ceiling is to the carport. But it's like three rafters away from one platform to the other. So I'm like, okay, I can make this. I'll just stretch over. I can stretch three three rafters. I could do this. Like who could, it's three rafters. It's easy. Nope. Uh, I the tip of my foot caught the other platform and then slipped down, and there was no there was no saving me. <laughs> you just went straight through it. Straight through it. <laughs> landed on a carport. Um, did you? I mean, you fell. So how high is the ceiling in your carport? Is it? Are we talking about oh, like ten, 10 feet? feet? Yeah, something like the ten feet, I guess. And you fell all the way to the concrete, or did you? Uh, no, I like I threw my arms out <laughs> as I was. I did, I did. I uh, I was like, oh fuck, I'm falling. You made a T T. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, how do I stop this? So I threw my arms. So I throw my arms out. Here's the deal. I put on several pounds since you know I was younger. My arms ain't used to holding my fat ass up in ten foot of air like that. <laughs> well, but let's be honest. Even when they, even when your arms were used to holding up your weight. Uh, they weren't used to doing it suddenly. Oh yeah, dude! Like, like all like, of a sudden. And the thing is, is that it, like it was pretty. Like I completely, I people, I know it's funny. I know I get why it is funny as well. That shit hurt, man. Yeah, I can imagine. My kidney was bruised. My thigh was all skin up. You can still see the bruise on my arm. Like it's wonderful. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and then so like I was t- somebody asked and I told him the story. And it got to the part where I threw my arms out and I, I caught myself on two rafters. 
And I say, oh, did you pull yourself back up? <laughs> really? <laughs> Fucking look at me. What about my upper body says I'm about to do a goddamn pull up 10 feet in the air? Nothing. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> the question should be if it wasn't 10 feet, but 10,000 feet, <laughs> could you have pulled yourself back up? No, but I, I could hold on a lot longer. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you survived the yeah. ordeal of uh And here's the deal. The wife, no clue what was going on. None. The whole reason I go up there is so she doesn't have her take a cold shower. Right. Not a clue. She was in the shower. I mean she yes, was still in the still, shower. Yeah. Uh, so it's not like it's not like she could have come to your aid or no. anything. So so if you had literally fallen and broken your neck, you would have just been out there dead. You would have just been out there dead for a while. Well, I go like she's in the shower, and I come in, dude, and I'm skin up, and I'm bruised, and I'm hurting, and I walk into the bathroom, and I just throw myself on the floor, and I start doing the Peter Griffin. Ah, oh, and she's like, "What?" Like she's pissed. She's like, "What the right, fuck is wrong?" Like, I don't with know you? if you noticed, but you didn't get it fixed. Oh, turns out, turns out, turns out, it's an electric water heater. There is no pilot light. <laughs> Well, why didn't it work? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You still don't know? I don't know. I didn't think, hey, let me wait 30 minutes and test it myself. I'm going to try. Like, my wife's not an idiot. She knows hot water from cold water. Like, if she says she turned it on hot and it never got hot, I believe her. She was wrong. <laughs> or maybe, like, like she'd been washing dishes right before and the dishwasher had been running and, like, somebody washed their hand. Like, maybe it was almost empty before she Yeah, the she washer's got going. The shower. She, yes. Could be. Yeah, yeah, you're right, could be, but I I literally injured myself for nothing. <laughs> for, for no reason. No reason. You you literally could have died in vain. <laughs> Let me tell you. To to learn, to gather the knowledge, uh that my hot water heater is electric was fucking painful, man. Like that's I don't I should not I shouldn't have even shared that knowledge. That's how precious it was to me to get it. <laughs> You should be like, like everybody oh, out there, and then, and and then made her climb up in the. You baby, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to climb up there and light the pilot. Oh line. no, I did fall. I did fall before I could tell what kind of water heater it was because I didn't make it to the platform, so I had to climb the fuck back oh, you're up there. Fucking kidding me? No, I swear, yeah, I had like, yeah. It's not like oh, I'm falling, and as I'm falling, throwing my arms out like a T, I glance over <laughs> and I go, huh, electric. That's not what happened. I guess I guess you make a good point. And here's the, I thought maybe I thought maybe like you caught yourself and then you <laughs> No, that's not I guess what you're happened. hanging there. You're like, huh? Doesn't even have a gas line. I've never cl- I've never climbed the a ladder fuck? more angry. <laughs> See, and everybody I- everybody listening now knows my water heater is electric, and they didn't have to fall through shit to learn that. <laughs> I got news for you. I don't think any of them stood a chance of falling through anything to gain that knowledge. Yeah, no. I wonder what other guy's water heater is. <laughs> I'll sneak into his house. <laughs> I'll climb into the attic. And if somebody does, that's... And I'll a- stretch across the rafters because it's only three of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> or I'll just bring my own, you know, one by or, or two by six, yeah. but I need it three rafters long. <laughs> We got uh, some listener mail. Javale! Javale is here! Ooh. Some, My favorite part of the show. Some. Uh, is it some, from, uh, can I guess who it's from? Okay. Uh, is it from someone in England? No. Man, fuck those dudes. Uh, I'm, you know, I don't know. <laughs> are we? Is it a new turf war? <laughs> yeah, me and is England. It, we got beef. Is it other guy versus England? Yeah. Got, I got beef with England, motherfuckers. Um. No, it's not from anybody in England. Uh, it is, however, from our uh, once and future friend and uh, longtime listener, <coughs> she who shan't be named. Oh no! Oh, ooh, is it? Uh, I'm a little nervous about this one, man. Uh, oh, you think that, that things have turned sour I'm, in the hey, big I'm, D? I did not. I said like in like what three months? Has it been three? I don't know how long it's been, but I was like, we're probably going to get a bad one. Sooner or later. That's a good. That's a good question. I don't know how long it's been now. I would say it's been a month or so at nah, least. more than that. No, since the last time. Maybe. Well, yeah, you're right. I get. I guess it's probably been six or seven episodes at least. Yeah, it's close which to would three mean, months. 
a dude, couple if months, they're not if they're not together anymore, um, you're a prognosticator. Man, just set me up a one eight hundred number. I'm telling you. Well, well, we need to go to the boats, and you can start calling roulette for me. Um, dear two guys, just wanted to write to give you guys an update. The former non-committer and myself are still together and doing very well. Captain non-committal. Uh, that's right. Your matchmaking advice apparently did wonders, so thank you. Last month, he surprised me with a night away and really surprised oh, yeah. me when he showed up at my work with flowers and my favorite soft drink. Diet Coke, of course. Look at this chick. Look at this dude. Look at this. What a good dude, man. It's the little thing. I worry about her a little. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's let's finish her, her story here. I don't want to bore you with all the details, but wanted you both to know that I appreciate your initial, initial advice on both sides, and all is well here in Texas. Uh, now, she pivots here in topics. So why are you worried for her? That's the end of the relationship Who, stuff. So. Whose favorite soft drink is Diet Coke? Mine. Yeah, but we've already discussed your eating habits, your the your palate is sc- like who cares? It's screwed. You're fucking. You're you're wacky. You're not the normal. For a normal person to have Diet Coke as their favorite drink, like there's so many choices out there. I you know I get where you're coming from, but I think a lot of I think a lot of women in particular. I don't I I think I I want to say I've looked at demographic studies on this. Uh, Diet Coke is gigantic. In the female population, at least around here. That's hey, that's marketing right there. That's fabulous marketing. Yes. Well, I mean, even look at the way that they like. If you look at the cans and the logos, and like we do, that, yeah. But the way that they draw Diet Coke, the way that they write their text is all. It's got a very feminine flair to it. It's very. It looks like a cosmetics label or something. But anyway, I don't think there's anything wrong with Diet. That's why you're worried about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, no, I don't think that's any cause for concern. Okay. That Coke is like the crack of cola. Coke is the crack of cola. No, Coke is the cocaine of cola. <laughs> crack is whack, man. I can afford Coke. <laughs> All right. Um, she said, I guess y'all heard about Larry Hagman dying, which we haven't mentioned it. But, yeah. I mean, yes, we did. We talked about it off air. We haven't we haven't talked about it on, on the show, though. Um, it was a very sad day here in Dallas. He died here, and I personally think that it was a fitting passing for him. Uh, have y'all talked about that on the show yet? I've gotten behind with school and work. First of all, shame on you. I'm sorry. We make time to make this show. You you should make time to listen to it once a week. That's fuck what I that. Say. Live your life. <laughs> if you we're see, not if we're not making enough of an impact on your happiness level, fuck us. <laughs> uh, we haven't talked about Larry Hagman passing. I was very sad. I we I finished the the first season of uh, the new version of Dallas the other day. Honey Bun and I are watching it, and I can't wait for the second season starts, I think, in January sometime. And he already filmed several episodes, so he they're going to write uh, JR's passing into the new show, which I think is really cool. I think that's a very – I mean, I think you'd have to. you got to say goodbye to that character. You know what made me – like, I never I, like I, I never really watched Dallas. Right. Uh, but there's another show that came along that made me appreciate Dallas more, and that show is True Blood. Why does that make you appreciate Dallas? Oh, they go to Dallas in like the second no, season, don't not, they? No, not, not even that. Why? Dallas is exactly what it is in the show. People have Texas accents oh. in that show. <laughs> you tell me, where the hell are they filming True Blood? Like, they talk about Shreveport Monroe, but it looks like they're in fucking, I, I don't know, some some little town down south like they're in the backwood swamp or something well if you but if you read the books like it, it reads like that too like the geography of it is loose and she plays lo- fast and loose with uh the way that louisiana works but the show even amps that up mostly because they're not just pitching it to people here they're pitching it to people all over the all over the country that expect a certain thing when they hear louisiana so if you tell them this is outside of shreveport louisiana they think, oh, there's fucking alligators and... Catholics. Yeah, Catholics. No, exactly. Baptists. Yeah. There's not nearly enough Baptists in that show to be in North Louisiana. <laughs> um, well, at least they did do the... You know, they did do the, the... In the first season, they had the one guy with a Cajun accent, like a real Cajun accent or whatever, uh, to play up the fact that people don't talk like that in North Louisiana. But never mind the fact that people also don't talk like they're from, as you say... Either from Dallas or my favorite is the ones that sound like they're in Gone with the Wind. You know. Oh like yeah, like, yeah. Well, I think always. I don't all, know nothing about birth and no babies. Right, but that I associate that 
with Georgia. Yes, and yeah. I feel like I feel like that's the only two Southern accents that people that people that aren't from the South they imagine that either you sound like you're from Georgia, you sound like you're from Texas, or you sound like you're a Cajun, and those are the only three variations where there's like this general country patois that is completely missed. You you preach into the choir though, man. No, I'm with you. I, that's one of the many reasons why I didn't follow up on True Blood. I like it all right. It's like it's completely. You want to talk about syrupy badness? Like, uh, it is much like Diet Coke. Absolutely zero calories. There was nothing filling in that show at all. I mean, you get to see Anna Paquin's tits every once in a while. Every once in a while. Yeah. But generally, they like they either cover her in gore, or her boyfriend's just crawled out of the grave before he fucks her. Or I mean, they always make you really earn her titties. It's not <laughs> <laughs> like that's in her contract. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Like you know, they have like the like. In, in She's a lot like, of I want to make sure. It, yeah. I want to make sure that nobody's beaten off to this. Yeah, so yeah. and if they are, they really want it. Right. We got to make me really nasty. Those first. ones that care for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anna. Maybe she's just. Maybe she's the sicko. Maybe she's oh, like, hey, is oh that yeah, a, they can fuck, but I gotta be dirty. <laughs> is that that's gotta be a girl that you think's attractive? Anna Pick, Anna Pack, Paquin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because the the gap, the yeah. teeth. Well, it's not just the gap. It's there's lots of things about her, but yeah, she's yeah, she's on my list. I do love tooth eccentricities. She ain't on mine. I know. What's wrong with you? You don't like you like She's noses. Not attractive. <laughs> she That's notice. what's wrong with me. Her nose isn't big enough. That's the problem. And I've See? never liked anything she's done. Really? Really? Yeah, I don't care enough about her uh, filmography to pull up IMDb and argue it with you. That's the honest god truth. I like her tits more than her body of work. <laughs> if you, I like her body <laughs> more than her body of work. <laughs> um. Back to She Who Shan't Be Named. I've jumped around a bit from episode to episode playing catch up. Other guy, I love the story about your wife getting the helicopter. See, we can do sweet things. Uh, one guy, I really liked when you had the little, uh, the littlest sensei. I had to Google how to spell that, by the way, she says. Um, I like when you had him on. He seems like a pretty cool little brother. One more thing. <clears throat> and generally, I think this was mostly addressed at us, and I would have just answered it in an email instead of on the air. But what's funny is, I think somebody's actually already asked it on air, and more than that, our friends have asked it several times off air. This is from... Do we have to answer it? Is this a question we answer? She who uh, shan't be named. I don't know that we've answered it or not, but we're, we may. She says, uh, I was really confused for a little while when y'all had the mythological hot redhead on the show. I thought for about 15 minutes that it was your girlfriend, one guy. Ah. Then I couldn't figure out why you wouldn't call her Honey Bun. I knew you'd mentioned that she was a redhead at least twice, so I figured that's who it must have been. Maybe that's just me uh, uh, confusing stuff in my head. Was she cool with you having another hot redhead on the show? Uh, the answer to the first one is uh, she wants to know who, who, who it is. Yes. Okay, that answer is a no. a work friend of yours. No, that answer is just no. Okay. And to answer the second one, it's also no. Yeah. No. Uh yeah, no. The answer to that second question, uh yes. She was a friend of she was a friend of other guys. Uh who oh, yeah, this to be is I got I got like I got like double enjoyment out of this. Yeah. Uh, of the thing? Of the of her being on the show? Well just her her being on the show, right? Oh, and so, the fact that you then got to rib yes. honey bun about it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And more than that, the fact that the fact that other people have brought it up for honey bun. Right, but it was completely yeah. me. Like, you did me a favor. I did. I say, I say I did you a favor. I mean, it's not like it was a big deal. She was very pleasant, and it was a good episode. But anyway, yeah, she was just friends of yours. You, y'all right, like happened we've to never, be together never, that evening. We've never brought somebody that only I knew <clears throat> on before. That that generally you hadn't really met. Uh, Did I know that guy before he came on the show? I think I yeah, met you've been, him. Yeah, you've met him several times at the house. Even before At least that? twice, yeah. My bad. Hmm. I probably do that every time I meet him too, don't I? Probably. This is like the first time I've ever met you. You're like, oh yeah, uh, that guy. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> now we know why he's named, he's named that guy. Um, some of that might get cut. Uh, no, but back to the topic at hand. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so the MHR is is a buddy of yours. You guys just happened to be hanging out that night. You came by the house. You were like, hey, look, we, this is our window to record, but we're hanging out. It, can she be on the show? Sure. And we needed a code name, and you just popped up. Hey, she's 
she's redhead. There you go. Look, she's the MHR. Funny. Neither one of us even, you didn't consider it. Like, you didn't plot this, that it was going to irk Honey Bun, did you? Mm. Maybe a little bit. You fucking dirty bastard. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't didn't think so. I didn't think you were that smart. I wasn't giving you enough credit. Anyway, neither one of us considered that it might affect Honey Bun in any fashion. Neither one of us also considered that it might be confusing for listeners. But apparently it was because you weren't the only one. Uh, she who shan't be named. Uh, I had a lot of people that I know in real life that listen to the show that were like, w- I had some that listened to the whole episode and then referred to Honey Bun, like addressed her as the mythological hot redhead. She was like, yeah, that was not me. See, it double works because if people think that it really is Honey Bun and we call her the uh, mythological hot redhead uh, and people think that it's her, but it's really not, then nah, it's just a myth. <laughs> It's like, well, no one, that's all uh, hearsay and, and eyewitness reports. Nobody, yeah, yeah, you can't trust that. Yeah, <clears throat> I like it. Uh, so anyway, that, that's the story there. She was not the, uh, she was not Honey Bun, uh, that's why. And and here's the further story. Uh, the standing rule is. Farther. F- the farther story? I don't think it's the farther. I think it's the further. I don't know. It's Here's my further elaboration. How about that? Significant others won't be on the show. That's that's the uh, that's that's the real answer. So neither. Yeah, because I don't want I don't want the truth to get out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We like gotta, my wife would rat me out <laughs> on all kind of shit, like quick. <laughs> likewise, likewise. Uh, Honey Bun might have better chemistry with you in here, and then I would suddenly just become the producer instead of the co-host of this program, and we can't have that. Uh, so I would like to see them do a show. I would love for them to do a show, but the problem is I'd have to come run it, and I don't have another hour in the week. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks for the email. Uh, thanks for the update. She who shan't be named. Um, and then she closes out here. As always, keep up the hilarity. Enjoying it all. Peace and merry early Christmas. You two get your women something great. They put up with y'all's craziness, so they deserve it. You guys are great. She who shan't be named. What a bitch. <laughs> what, for calling us out on the on the presents? No, I'm Jewish. <laughs> You're the worst Jew I've ever met. <laughs> I'm not. I know. That's what I'm saying. I don't roll on Shabbos. Um, so that was our listener mail. Thanks so much for updating us. And, uh, folks, you can get in at two guys one pod at me.com. Two guys one pod, all written out, no numbers. Two guys one pod at me.com. There was a massive discovery this week other guy uh let me can i guess yes please uh is this a it's a a, uh water on mercury no what's Uh, bigger than that that might have happened too i don't know anything about that okay (laughs) that's you got something bigger than that I, i you yeah in my opinion it might be yeah uh discovery Oh, is it one of those sex discoveries? Is is it one of those? No. Like, 70% of women are sad after sex. I mean, this might be sexy for some people. It's not for me. Uh, this is just fascinating. It You might call it magical. Oh, the North Korean unicorn cave? Fuck you! Is that what you found? You sell it like that and it sounds so tawdry. Oh, oh, the North Korean unicorn cave. How about, <laughs> how about, how about this? How about... uh? How about North Korea finds secret unicorn lair? And then it wasn't very secret. Said to prove Pyongyang was capital of ancient Korea. See, that's a fucking headline. So you're like, oh, fucking, there's, there's a unicorn Korean cave. Hmm. Dude, look, this is all going to come out to be a hoax. Like, literally, if you read further, it says, inscribed on the side of the cave is unicorn cave. Of fucking course it's going to come out to be a hoax. It's the North Koreans. Of course... They also say that their their supreme leader shits golden bricks and writes all of Hollywood screenplays. I'm not sure about that whole brick thing. He's also an Olympian, <laughs> I think, right? And like all the sports, but yeah. he doesn't go to compete because it's not fair. They still like talk about like the God King and stuff, right? Like they uh, anyway. In an announcement Friday, just because you're forced to say something doesn't mean you you believe it. <laughs> Indeed. 
In an announcement Friday that seems better suited for a fairy tale, a North Korean state news agency reports that archaeologists recently reconfirmed the lair of a unicorn once ridden by an ancient Korean king. What the fuck? Reconfirmed? It's already been confirmed. Why reconfirm it? Well, the reason that they reconfirmed it is because this is legendary. The, the legend says that the ancient king, the founder of Korea, rode a unicorn. It's not confirmation. It's a legend. They have confirmed it now because no, they've they found the layer, is what they're saying. It's been reconfirmed. <laughs> well, that's in their opinion. According to the Korean Central News Agency, the layer of the mythical creature is lo- uh, uh, the layer of the mythical creature is located 200 meters. It's about 219 yards from the Yongmyong Temple in Pyongyang. The Yongmyong Temple in Pyongyang. Folks, sounds dirty. <laughs> Korea, Korean. As we've all learned from Gangnam Style, it's a very difficult language. My son, by the way, my three-year-old, speaks fluent Gangnam Style. <laughs> Hor- he, but he says sexy lady horribly. He's what the happened to his English on that? Like he gr- like, like, sexy lady. Like, but, but that's how he thinks it's said. So when he grows up and like hits on a girl or whatever, that's how. No, so he's not going to know any other way to approach a woman. Like anytime he sees an attractive woman, he very quickly like drops his jaw. Hey! It starts riding an imaginary horse. Uh, Maybe it's a unicorn. Let me tell you something. Dude's riding a unicorn. It's not. He doesn't so much do like the lasso and the horse galloping thing, but the little sideways flippy foot thing, he's got that shit down pat. He walks that way now. I'm a little bit worried about it. Although, I think it'll make a badass soccer dribble, right? Like, couldn't you? You could fucking work the shit out of a soccer ball if you can run like that, right? Wobbity, 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 wobbity. Do do all the way a guy that knows shit about soccer. Anything about soccer? Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Whoa, what did that pull up in my... What was I looking at on Google? Pyongyang. <laughs> Told you it sounded dirty. Pyongyang? Wait a minute. Uh, let me go back to my... Where am I? Ah, shite. Okay, here we go. So the the lair of the mythical creature is located uh, 219 yards uh, away from the, t- from the temple. <laughs> what? <laughs> they, they, they knew the temple. Like They know the temple's there. This thing is 219 yards from the temple, and they just find it? Well, it's 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 underground, I think. It, a rock that sits in front of the la- Well, there you go. There's a rock that sits in okay, front of the reading. layer. Okay, let's keep reading. There you go. A rock sits in front of the layer contains carvings that some believe date back to the period of the Cor- uh, Koreo Kingdom. Uh, that's uh, 918 to 1392. And what do these carvings depict or say? Uh, the translated uh, now this comes from this comes from the Pyongyang chapter of the old book this is the Korea history a geographical book says the Umul pavilion is on the uh, pavilion is on the top of Mount Kumsu with the Yamyang temple uh, one of Pyongyang's eight scenic spots beneath it the temple served as a relief palace for King uh, Tong Myong in which there is the lair of his unicorn. Uh, it should be noted that North Korea's propaganda machine is Who keeps their turning- unicorn 219 yards away, man? Like, if I had a unicorn, it would just be around me all the time. Maybe unicorn shit is very smelly. Like, maybe you no, need No, it's not. Them. It's magical. Well, that doesn't mean that it's not... Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not smelly. Name one thing magical that you think is smelly. Trolls? They're not magical. Well, what else are they? Mythical. <laughs> uh, what about dwarves? I bet dwarves stink like a motherfucker. They bathe? That doesn't mean they don't stink. I bet they have a very natural, earthy odor that is offensive to humans' ear, to humans' noses. You know, you know any dwarves? Uh, I have not met Warwick Davis. No. I know a couple. They don't stink. Well, I didn't mean little people. I mean... Now you say. Well, they're not magic, are they? Bigot. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so 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 you're telling me you're busting my bubble before we even get down here. You're saying you're saying there's there's not going to be any unicorn at the no, bottom of the No, all I'm saying cave. is, all I'm saying is, get this. 219 yards from this temple, they find a rock carved with beware of unicorn. And they just find it? Uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, the end of this article, I like it. It should be noted that North Korea's propaganda machine is famous for churning out unusual stories, including the details of Kim Jong II's divine birth. 
and the peculiar natural wonders that occurred as the earth mourned the death of the dear leader. Uh, while still alive, Kim also reportedly invented the hamburger, wrote 1,500 books in college, and shot 11 holes in one the first time he ever played golf. Fuck. <laughs> On the other hand, unicorn sightings around the <laughs> like, world. Hold on, that's like to prove your divineness? <laughs> yes. Golf? <laughs> wow. Uh, on the other hand, unicorn sightings around the world crop up from time to time, including one last January in Canada that was eventually revealed to be a publicity stunt. Uh, so, probably no unicorn in Canada. Uh, excuse me, no unicorn in Korea. You know, there are, um, I, don't, I, I can't remember if it's like a goat type of animal or more like a gazelle type of animal, but there is an animal that is nicknamed uh, the unicorn, but just because both of its horns are so symmetrical that when you look at it from the side, they only look like they have one. Huh. I did not know that. That's uh, that's interesting. Uh, so, my segue here, uh, my 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 smooth little radio segue. So there there probably are no unicorns in Korea. There really or are anywhere. Though. There really are though. Big bad wolves in Russia. There are though bigger badder grandmothers in Russia. Oh my God! Yes. Headline. I love this story. Grandmother who killed wolf with axe is most badass person in yes. Russia. Yes. She's like, what is she, 67? Uh, I can't remember her exact age. But 56 she's, years old. Yeah. yeah. Her name is Ashat Maxudova. Of course. <laughs> Maxudova. What did my the wolf... Name, uh, my name was Ashat Maxudova. What did that wolf do whenever you killed it? Oh, it took Ashat. That's uh, funnier than you acted. Uh... I'm sorry, I got a text message in the middle of that. Um, <clears throat> 56-year-old Ashat Maxudova, who lives in a village in the southern part of Russia, uh, was forced to defend her family recently and defend her flock. Uh, when I raised my arm up like this, the wolf was just holding my hand. This is a quote from Ashat trying to claw my hand. I wanted to open his mouth and put my fist all the way there, all the way to his throat, but I could not open him. So I just left my hand, and the wolf was just clawing into it, pulling on it, pulling away like this. And then I took the axe and hit him on his head, she said. Yes. Yes. Let's go back and break that down a little bit. Ashat's plan was to shove her entire arm down, down the his wolf's throat. throat. Man. <laughs> and rip his heart out through his tongue. I guess. Yeah. I, or rip his asshole. Yeah. I don't like, I'm going to turn you inside out, fucking wolf. Like, if I'm ever confronted with a wolf, that is not my first thought. <laughs> Me neither. At man. all. It's, like, am I quicker than one guy? Well, <laughs> and the answer is probably yes. <laughs> for about 20 yards, but that's all I got. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. What you got to hope for <laughs> is that the wolf is very close to us. I just tripped it. <laughs> that's. <laughs> I just shove you down. <clears throat> I think probably like my initial thought would be like with a shark. Like you punch a punch shark in the, in the nose. Dude, even if you're getting if, if you're being attacked by a shark, I guarantee you you would not think, let me hit it in the nose. You're thinking, fuck, I'm being eaten by a shark. No, I, well, yeah. I mean you think it you think it in the midst of a, like you think it like like I got beaten by a shark. Remember how sometimes on TV they tell you to punch in the nose? Like it's in the screen. Yes, it's, you're screaming it in your head. But I no, I think it's in there. I think in a fight or flight kind of scenario, I think it does. I think it does cross your mind. I think. Well, you fucking. We watched the gray together. Yeah, I think I roll up the old fist to cuffs and try to go for the nose. Or at least that's my. <laughs> I really, really hope I'm never in a situation, and I'm going to do my best to keep myself out of situations where I'm ever going to have to fucking punch a wolf. But I don't live in Russia. Ashat's got a different scenario going on for her. Uh, I don't I don't understand. You know, what the, I skipped the beginning of the story, I guess. What the fuck was she doing in which she was attacked by the wolf? She's a flock. Anyway? She, was, she was tending her herd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. 56-year-old yeah. sheep herder. She's, she's herding sheep and cattle. And the fucking wolf came for him, man. Wow. I think it's. I think she's the grandma who cried wolf. 
You think she just made it up? Yeah, like she came across this dead fucking wolf. And so she's out there herding her sheep and just comes up with a story like, you know, I'll make I'll make something of myself before I die. Uh, we, we, how, uh, did she just, like, put her own hand in the wolf's mouth and, like, clamp it down? <laughs> Cut her up a, a little bit? I, let me tell you, I'm looking at a picture of Ashat here. Holding her fucking axe and, Wiry and man She's a wiry old woman man Yeah I would not want to Come up again her Let's just put it like that Russian granny Fights off beast That's the headline On this uh, website Anyway we'll post uh, Both those links uh, To those stories uh, To our website Two guys One pod Dot com That's two guys One pod Dot com By the way you should Stop by there And do a whole bunch Of stuff You can uh, watch uh, Our old videos We've got uh, like Six seven videos Posted to YouTube And we're going to Have some more of those Eventually it's just A matter of getting Some time here Uh, But uh, you can listen To all the old Episodes of the show Uh, You can find Our support links Um, Of course you can Buy music uh, From iTunes We've got music links For our outro songs Uh, Most weeks We'll have a link There straight to The song itself In iTunes You can buy those or shop Amazon through our links on twoguysonepod.com as well. This holiday season, when you uh, shop for your loved ones or uh, people you hate, I don't know why you're buying them gifts, but uh, maybe you're just buying something for you. That's all right. Buy something for you and throw a little change our way. Shop uh, through those Amazon links at twoguysonepod.com. Won't cost you anything extra, I promise. And we won't track your purchases, etc. We won't spam mail you. But we will get a little change kicked our way for sending you to them, and we appreciate that. <clears throat> Got a couple of things before we get off the air. Excellent. <clears throat> One is, I was thinking about this as we were talking about the uh, old Russian grandma. So you know these shows like Survivor Man and Bear, Bear Grylls and Dual Survivor where these survivalist and uh, highly trained people, like they've been in the Army and stuff, go out and show you how to uh, survive in certain situations, right? Yes. Um and in particular, the Survivor Man, Les Stroud, goes out. It's just him, three cameras, and that's it. He films everything and shows everything. Uh, I don't want to see a guy surviving in the woods that knows what he's doing. I want to see a couple of guys in the woods that have no clue what they're doing. <laughs> like, you want to see a show where, well, where they drop me in the woods with a film, yes. with a film crew yes. and follow me around for at least four or five hours until I drive myself insane. Yes. <laughs> It, um, this week on Bear Fodder. Honest to God. Like, I want them to just drop you, like, in fucking Alaska and go, good luck, fucker. So so the, the question then should be... That'd be a good show. I'd watch it. question should be, how much would you have to pay me to experience that? Um, how long would they let me, like... Could I bail? Like, at what point... Like, at what point could I keep my money? At what point could I... At what point... Like how long would I have to be wandering in the Look, woods? Look, they would have you. They would have you hooked up with some kind of monitors, right? Heart rate monitor, blood pressure, whatever, and they're monitoring you from a few miles away. <clears throat> oh, you're saying literally like like Bear Grylls, where it's just me and a camera all by myself, and uh, and the and the good people that are going to keep me safe. Yeah, that's Lester. Out Bear Grylls a pussy. Oh, my bad. Uh, <sighs> like if your name's Bear, come on, man, less. Not that much of a man name. You got to be a badass to sport it. Um. So yeah, yeah I don't the think thing is, is the thing is, is it'd be a lot you, of money. You got to figure shit out. Hundreds of millions of dollars. I think. Really? Yeah. I'd do it for ten grand an episode. Done. And some and some and some life insurance. Well, I mean, how long would you have to be out there in the woods filming the episode? I don't know. Five days. I like I a work week, man. Yeah, no, I'm saying I wouldn't laugh. You'd do. You'd be in the woods for for five days solid for ten thousand dollars. Fuck yes. And you'd do it How every was, week for like three months, and then the sepo- then the episodes are cut, and I would do it again for three more months or six months. Or I was gonna say if you, but if you're only making ten thousand dollars, like do the math. If you're only making ten thousand dollars a week, uh, there's only fifty two fucking weeks in the year. You you're not making a very good salary living like that. Really? Ten thousand dollars, you wouldn't do it for ten thousand dollars. Yes, I you would. Couldn't, you couldn't quit your day job. That's what I'm Dude, saying. I could. I'm telling you, I could. No, you couldn't. I'm saying, do the math real quick. Ten thousand dollars a week. Okay. Times ten is how much? A hundred thousand. Oh, never mind. Wait, I didn't do the math either. That's five five hundred twenty thousand. Yeah, I was just coming out to like fifty two grand. <laughs> I was coming out like fifty two grand. I was like, dude, you got a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm, I, 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 
my math, my math real wrong. <laughs> yeah, and th- dude, that's a hundred thousand dollars to work just a fifth 10. of a year. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, yeah, but still, no, I couldn't do it because here's I wouldn't last in the woods for five days. I literally, I'd starve to death. And that's part of the show. But the thing is, is you can't tap out. They have to come get you. Yeah. Well, here's what here's what would be realistic. I would for five thousand dollars a week. I would spend one full twenty-four hour period. No, nobody wants to see that. There's no struggle. No, listen to me. This is I'm I'm not I'm not saying it's anything anybody would give a shit about. I'm telling you the most uh, discomfort I'm willing to put myself to for money, uh, or at least in this particular way. I would go and I would go and live in the wilderness. Like on my own in a in a survivor type fashion for twenty four hours at a stretch for five thousand dollars. Probably. Do you think about But I wouldn't do that more than I wouldn't do that more than maybe six times a year. Dude, if you like did, it would not be my only gig. If you did the show my way, like every season could be a new guy that you could watch him from beginning of the season to the end of the season. And see what survival tactics he has to organically come up with, because you're going to be way better at it. Yeah, more than more than what he more than what he comes up with. It's about the individual hardening. Like it's about him grow. Like the first. Okay, so on the first show, he only makes it to the like like barely to the the second day, you know. And then the crew has to come get him because he eats yeah. a poison berry or something. And the second show, he makes it to the second night, but then he gets a bad infection and they had to come get him. And the third time, he runs out of food on the third day and he can't find anything and they have to come get him. And the fourth show, all the time, all of a sudden, he's there the whole week. Yeah. And then he's really good at it. Yeah. And you name the series, I Will Survive. It's actually not a bad show. That's actually not a bad show. So what So what you would do is you would go and find, like, what you do is you'd go and pick, like, these people that are doing, like, regional hunting programs or something like uh well not the duck dynasty guys because they got their own thing but um, people that were like the duck dynasty guys before they blew up or something you go and find one of those guys who's a pretty good personality on camera and you'd be like hey look i'm a you're th- our guy this season and if you make it if you make it all the way through the season the total payout is you know whatever yes you're the bumbling idiot this season yeah good luck fucker and it would be really good for him because at the end of the year he could sell his podunk videos for much more money than he did before the show got off that's the thing that's that's we're gonna clip this out and keep that idea to ourselves never mind that's a good fucking idea should that is circle tm Uh, that's funny uh so and here's the other thing so motherfucker let me find out again that's all right do 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 here we go got it okay so do you have any questions about sex? Famed sexologist Dr. Debbie Herbenick will answer them. Okay? So ask anything you're curious about, even the most basic things or things that you may not know as fact. Chances are that many of you have the wrong answer. Dr. Herbenick will dispel myths and give you facts. Here are some of the ones already on the list. Okay, so what I want to do is... I'll toss out a couple of the questions. We'll give what we think the answer is. Oh, and see what the expert says? See what the expert says. All right. How well do do uh, two guys know sex? Two guys and the nasty. Here we go. <laughs> okay, here we go. Would some specific foods affect the flavor of my sexual juices? Absolutely. I, I agree. I think yes. I think that's a true statement. And that's true for both genders. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Are there really any miracle methods to extend the size of your penis? No. I don't think there's any miracle methods. I do think there are things you can do. I don't think there's any. There's not a get rich quick scheme. There's. I think there's what not you a got, big dick what, you, what, you're, what you're born with, that's what you got. Good luck. Yeah, largely. Or not so largely, depending <laughs> on the case. Or literally. <laughs> Why do nipples get hard when we get sexually aroused? I don't. I don't have a clue. Um, I've actually looked that up before. Well, I. I mean, I do know that they're. They're. I mean, Why your nipples would we need, are erogenous zones. 
and they are sexual organs. But why? But I, I mean, I, the, is it because they're easy to reach? Like they're in, yeah, I they're essentially like they're they're easy to locate. Well, not just easy to locate, but they are um, they're external signifiers of gender too. Like the way that breasts are shaped. The, this is talking about nipples, not breast nipples. Well, but the breast is, ju- I mean, the nipple is just an extension of the breast. Why does it harden? No, but it's no, not, I don't know. nipples, nipples I don't know. aren't gender specific. I could continue to BS. The answer is I don't know. I don't yeah. know. That was, uh, I don't know. The, the experts going to stop you If you're listening and you know why nipples get hard, or you think you know <laughs> why nipples get hard, let us know. Uh, somebody asked, and this is a reasonable question too, why do men have nipples at all? Why do males Period. Well, I think Not it has men. to. I think it has to do with uh, something that we find attractive sexually, or, or uh, it's, it's got to be something like that. I don't know. Maybe so. But get, but se- but my nipples don't only get hard when I'm aroused. They get hard when I'm fucking yeah, cold when you're too. Cold too. Yeah. Well, but as as we discussed last week, a penile erection also has multiple yeah uh, meaning. That's true. So that's true. I don't know that my nipples get that hard when I'm horny either i mean not always maybe sometimes i don't know if i maybe i'm not reading you know i'll get to that one later all right is there a miracle method to increase the amount of semen i produce i bet there probably is something you could do to make more i don't know what it is don't have sex for a day or two (laughs) no give it a couple of hours like second third time around i mean i'm i'm blowing smoke yeah uh well yeah but i mean i bet there's a i bet there's something you i bet there's a diet I bet there's something you can do to your diet to make it thicker or, or more volume or whatever. Yeah, I bet there's. Yeah, I bet there's something you could do. Hey, well, well, let's be honest. You and I have both seen pornos. Those guys don't just wait. I mean, they wait too. Maybe I don't know. I don't think, dude. I don't think there is. I don't. I don't think there is because the way. Uh, you think some guys are just born with that and some guys aren't? What the amount of semen? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like this. Like uh, animals, we're we're an animal. Uh, but most things about an animal, uh, for example. Uh, we want we want to procreate. We want to reproduce. Yeah, we are wired. We're geared. We we fucking love sex because sex is what makes us reproduce. Yes. So you would think that we have evolved into such a state that reproduction is is super important. So we're gonna give it our all every time. Like our body is going to want to get someone pregnant. Like if we were having sex, our body physiologically is thinking. Let's make a baby. <laughs> so you're saying every shot is all that you got? Yeah, I don't think your body. I don't think your body's gonna waste it. Like it's gonna give everything that it can produce. It's giving you. I'm giving it all I got, Captain. It's, hey, it's like man. Hey, if milk increased your sperm count, you would crave milk. She can't do it, Captain. Yeah, like if vitamin C did it. You'd be eating oranges like a motherfucker because your body would crave it. She doesn't have the power. <laughs> yeah, so there's that one. I don't think there is. You think uh, there is? I, yeah, I think, I think there is okay. something you can do. Uh, is it true that most women don't get vaginal orgasms? I do not understand this question. Well, what they mean is clitoral or... Uh, they instead they get clitoral orgasms or anal orgasms. Not all women can receive orgasms merely through uh, vaginal stimulation. That I mean that is a true statement. I don't know that it's true that most women can't. I think most women don't, but that's not the question that chick asked. I think probably the answer that she's going to give us is no. Most women don't, or most women can't. That's not true. Most women can. No, it says most women don't. I oh. think they can. I think yeah, they can. I think that, everybody can. Then I agree. Well, I don't know that everybody can. There's girls out there going, those line motherfuckers, they don't know what the fuck they're talking yeah. about. No, but uh, yeah, I think the answer to that question then is yes. Most women don't. That's. I think that is true. Okay. I have a single sexual partner. What do I need to do to avoid urine infections while practicing anal sex and not use a condom? I don't. I don't understand that question. What do you mean? I have a single sexual partner. What do I need to do to avoid urinary infections? While pre- oh, don't go ass to vagina. 
That's that's pretty easy. That's Don't true. go ass to vagina. No urinary tract infection. No ass to vagina. <laughs> Our ass sex condom on. Well, that depends. Is it the dude? He might just be talking about like, hey, I want to have anal sex with my partner. Oh, it's a, a dude asking the question. Wow. I want to not get a urinary tract infection. I want to make sure I don't get a UTI. So you're saying that this is a question. A dude has a single sexual partner uh, that is another dude. Oh, no, I wasn't even necessarily saying that. I'm saying, I well, I mean, like, that might be, I mean, it might be me writing in. Hey, no, he was just alerting the, the he was given, it's like, so if you call if you call in the the line to ask a fantasy question, you got to give them the layout of your fantasy team, right? Like, hey, I'm all set at quarterback, so we, let's just talk about running back. And I've got standard scoring in my league. You you got to set up the situation, and then I can give you advice on it. This person is setting up the situation. I have a single sexual partner, as a, as in I'm not promiscuous, so that's not a word. Right, I'm for with me. you, but what I'm saying is it could be a guy asking the question. And his sexual oh, partner yeah. is another, another guy. Dude, yes. Because that would be far more important. Because what are the other options? Oh, yes. No, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, now I got you. No, I th- it, but I don't think it matters whether it's a dude or a girl. I think, But I do think it's coming from Man, that's a, a tough question. I don't think it's coming from the person that is, that is receiving the anal sex. I think it's from the pitcher, not the catcher. This is a very specific question. Conversation we got into know, all of a sudden. I don't. Ha- I don't have to worry about that stuff in my daily life. Uh, well, not in my daily life. No. But <laughs> 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 uh, was that the last question? That's a good yes. survey. Oh, so what? So what? What was your plan here? We're going to come back. We're going to talk about the answers on next week's. Maybe. <laughs> what a fucking tease! <laughs> all right, then. I really want. The, I want. To um to get other oh answers. you want other people to to write in and say what they think their their answers are I got and you. then we'll take we'll take we'll take the average of everybody's answers and that will be we will post it I'm I'm no I'm gonna tell you here's what's gonna happen I think that's very much one where people are gonna play at home there's a reason why people like those surveys in their seventeen magazine or in their Cosmo it's because you score that shit for yourself and then you crumple up the paper and throw it away you don't tell anybody about it you don't post it on Facebook you don't write into a podcast. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't think we're going to get a lot of feedback on on how much people know about sexual questions. Um, except that if we come back next week and you give all the answers, I think we might have several people going. Yes, I knew all of them. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, duh. <laughs> yes, I knew. I, I knew the answers to all of those. Um, that is another show. Uh, go check out our website, two guys one com. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show. Subscribe in iTunes and give us a review if you can. Uh, and again, search for us, uh, two guys, one pod.com until next time. I'm one guy and I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. Cafe on the Avenue. Shared a seat for two for the first time In spite of all the chemistry You left me in a mystery And I don't know why So Shelly, won't you call Shelly, won't you call When you get home When you get home I hope that I'd hear from you At least every week or two But it's been a while It hurts to know Sometimes you gotta let it go When love runs out of town So Shelly, won't you call Shelly, won't you call When you get home
we I run into people all the time mm-hmm. hey, in weird places. Nice okay. later. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's a good. He's a lot of fun. Yeah. I have no fucking clue. I was hoping you could tell me. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> I'm glad we never had to use. I know. That's awesome. All right.